Come on, do I hear you in the back? Come on, Times Square. Lift up a shout of praise. If you came expecting to see the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, show up tonight. Tonight, we stand on the shoulders of generations of praying grandmothers praying great-grandfathers, generals of the faith that cried out for revival to come to this city, to come to this nation, and to come to this world. So I want to hear one more time, are you ready for revival? I don't know what you battled to get to this place tonight. But this is a defining, this is a defining moment for many of you. Maybe you battled addiction, maybe you battled family strife, and it was a struggle to get here. But the, the fire of revival is being sparked in the crossroads of the world and is going to be sent out tonight. And so I hope you came expectant. Because we're going to let the entire island of Manhattan hear us tonight, amen? And so right now, before we kick this thing off, because once it starts, there's no stopping it. I need you all to take out your phones right now. I need you to take out your phones right now. Because Pastor Mike Signorelli... Come on, who's grateful for Pastor Mike for putting this event together, this historic event? He wants to make sure that he can stay connected with you. He wants to make sure that when he's in your town, your city, your region, you know about it. Because how many know revival is going to spread? The dominoes are going to keep dropping. So I need you right now to text the word REVIVAL to this number. I'm going to give you a second to find it. I want you to text the word REVIVAL. And why don't you go ahead and put it in all caps just because. Text the word REVIVAL to 347-329-3500. Do you need to hear it again? 347-329-3476. All right, we'll say it again later in case you missed it, or you can ask somebody next to you. And now I want to speak to the thousands who are joining us online tonight from all over the world. Can we give them a New York City welcome? I need you to light up in the chat right now where you're tuning in from and how many of you know that the Domino Revival movie is coming back November 13th. And so right now I need you to tap that link that's pinned in the chat and in the description and get your tickets because how many of you know Revival is continuing, amen? Well, my name's Evan Wilson. I'm actually the producer of the Domino Revival movie and a pastor of V1 Church. How many of you saw the Domino Revival on October 24th? How many of you are coming back and bringing more people this time? And so it's coming back November 13th, but I'm telling you guys, because we're getting ready to kick this thing off, Pastor Mike Signorelli has a timely historic, I would dare say, prophetic word for this city, for this nation, and for this world. And so you're getting ready to hear from him and some many other powerful men and women of God tonight. But before we get into that, I got a question. Do you got a praise? Do you got a praise? Do you got something to praise God for tonight? Oh, come on. From the front to the back, let all of New York City hear you. Come on, let's go.
Jesus! Shout to the Lord! The Bible says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you believe he's Lord tonight in Times Square? So you got a choice to make tonight, and the choice is abundantly clear. You can declare Jesus Christ Lord of your life right now because you want to. Or you can declare Jesus Christ Lord of your life in the day of judgment because you have to. But make no mistake, you will declare Him Lord. It don't matter if you're a Baptist, a Church of God, a Catholic, a Pentecostal. It doesn't matter if you're a Muslim. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew, red and yellow, black and white, tall, short, fat, skinny, hairy, headed and bald. Every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every demon in hell is going to worship Jesus one day. The angelic host is crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Because it was in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one having six wings, with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain did it fly. And one cried and said to the other, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the post of the temple moved at the voice of him that spake, and the house was filled with smoke. Then Isaiah had a response and said, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, for I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the glory of the Lord God of hosts. Hear me, church, when I say you will never have a moment in which you declare, Woe is me, until you first have a moment when you declare, Holy is he. And we can fuss all we want to about what's happening in this nation around the world, but you hear me, we do not have a White House problem. We have a God's house problem because judgment must begin at the house of God. It's time to call the people back to repentance. It's time to call pastors to repentance. It's time we get some leather lung men and women of God who will stand up and say enough's enough. We're not going to back up, pack up, slack up, or shut up until we've been taken up by the glory of God. It's time for the church to worship Jesus more loudly than it ever has before. We can't go silent. It's not time to lay down, roll over. We're not fighting for victory, but from the victory that Jesus has given us. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that every single thing happening in this nation is pointing in one direction. Jesus is coming again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God's going to use everything that we see that may look discouraging. He's going to turn it around for His glory and for our good. How many of you know out here Jesus is still in the business of changing people's lives from the inside out? He said, if my people, not if those people, no, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, shout then, then he said, I'll hear from heaven, and I'll forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. You see, the burden to bear, to see revival in this world, falls squarely on the shoulders of the church. It is we that must repent. Seek the favor of God. Walk in the fear of God. Walk in the holiness of God. It's the church that needs to rise up. We need a fresh baptism of the power of the Holy Spirit in our churches like never before. It's not about fog machines, big screens, and skinny jeans. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
It's the death, the burial, and resurrection that radically changes us. A little boy came home from church one day and he said, Daddy, I've got one question about the Bible. How tall is Jesus? His daddy said, I have no idea, but I guess he's about six foot tall. What difference does it make? He said, it makes a big difference. He said, I'm 10 years old. How tall am I? He said, about four and a half foot tall. The little boy gasped and said, Daddy, we've got a problem. He said, Junior, what do you mean we got a problem? He said, well, Daddy, think about it. If I'm four and a half foot tall and Jesus is six foot tall and Jesus lives inside me, he's going to stick out, ain't he? Yes! That's the point of the gospel. You get somebody big as God on the inside, he's going to manifest himself on the outside. And it's time for the manifest glory of God, the manifest power and presence of God. You, you see, here's what we've done. We have mistakenly swapped the roles and we say, God, give us power. God, give us power. God, give us power. When here's what the Lord says, if you would sit in my presence, you would have my power. We don't need more power. We need more presence because the presence will bring about the power. And you better know, when you get the presence of God and the power of God fills you, I know what the Bible says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you shall cast out devils. There's not a demon this side of hell that can withstand the power of the name of Jesus. Every principality has to bow at the power of the name of Jesus. Every political party has to bow at the name of Jesus. Every church has to bow at the name of Jesus. And what tonight is, is really a foreshadowing of what God's doing in this nation. I'm telling you what's happening right now in Times Square. Our grandchildren will talk about the night that Jesus was lifted up in New York City. When worship rang through the buildings. When the glory of God was brighter than the LED screens all around us. When people got saved, set free. When deliverance happened right on the streets of Times Square. You see, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I'm telling you, God's doing it right now. I know you can look at Twitter and Facebook and everything happening in the media and on social media. And, and you can get what I call the Eeyore syndrome. Oh, bother. And you can get all kind of nervous and get, you know, chewing your fingernails to the quick. And basketball size. And you can't sleep at night. And the devil tries to mess your microphone up. But you better know there's a God in heaven. That is very much in control of everything that is happening. He is sending revival on levels that we've never imagined, ladies and gentlemen. There is no one man that can carry what God's doing in this nation. There is no one denomination that can carry what God's doing in this nation. He's doing something so amazing, so spectacular. That even people that doubt why we are here tonight will have to sit back, fold their arms, and say there has to be something to the God they serve. Because there's no way some human can pull off what we're seeing in Times Square tonight. But I want to tell you something. In the Bible, Jesus came to his disciples and he said, I'm getting ready to do a triumphal entry into the city. And what I want you to do is I want you to go... And I want you to turn down a certain road. And when you turn down a certain road, you're going to see a little donkey that's tied to a fence post. Loose that donkey. Bring it to me. I have need of him. Well, obviously, the question is, what are we going to do with the guy that owns the donkey? Jesus said, I've got that covered. You just say the master has need of him and all will be well. Because what God orders, he pays for. So they went down and turned left, went down this alley, and sure enough, they found this little donkey tied to a fence post. And they said, it must be him, the only donkey out here. They started to unhitch him. The guy came out and said, hey, I saw you on my ring camera. What are you doing? He said, the master has need of him. He's like, oh, why didn't you say it to begin with? They got the donkey. They took him back to Jesus. Here's what the Bible says. They took some blankets. And they put them on that little donkey's back. Jesus got up on that donkey. And people went before him. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. 
began to lay the palm branches on the ground. But you know what's interesting? We talk about Jesus, which we should in that passage. We talk about the guy that gave the donkey. We talk about the disciples and their obedience when they didn't understand. But you know the one person in the story that's really the hero that we never talk about is the donkey. Because I'm going to tell you something, church. That donkey had one job. Not two, not ten, not fifteen. That little donkey had one responsibility, and it's the same responsibility we have tonight in this city. His only job was to carry well the presence of Jesus everywhere he went. That was it. He didn't have to have a blue check mark. He didn't have to have a microphone. He just had Jesus on his back. And your job tonight is to carry the presence of Jesus well. That's my job tonight. To carry the presence of Jesus well. That's the only thing we're called to do. To carry him well. I give you this and I'm out of the way. A story we all read about when we were in school was the late great hero, a man by the name of Paul Revere that effectively did not just save a civilization but the entire nation. And when everybody thought he was a kook and a, and a whack and today they'd call him a QAnon conspiracy theorist, he goes out on his horse and he lights a lantern and he tries to wake up the town and he says, look, I'm telling you, they're coming. The red coats are behind me, they're coming. The red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. They thought he was crazy. Some people escaped. Obviously, we know how history turned out on the other side. A few people just slammed the doors, thought he was crazy. But he, with all the passion he could muster up, he mounted that steed of freedom and he rode through that town. They're coming. They're coming. The redcoats are coming. They're coming. They're coming. And everybody thought he was crazy but the people that he rescued and saved. And I'm going to tell you something. People think we're crazy. Not just because we're here, but because of who we serve and who we belong to. People think we've lost our mind. People think we're kooks, but you better know this. Paul said he's a fool for Christ. You're somebody's fool. It might as well be Jesus. So my ministerial and pastoral responsibility tonight is very simple. I make you this promise tonight. No matter what they say. No matter what the media writes and how they inviscerate us. No matter how many demons and devils stand against us. No matter what happens in the news media, I'm going to take my word of the Lord. I'm going to tuck it in my heart. I'm going to put on the full armor of God that I can withstand all the wiles of the devil. I'm going to get on the stage of freedom. I'm going to grab every microphone that God will allow me to grab. And I'm going to run through every city, including this one tonight. And I'm going to declare, Jesus is coming. 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 Give him praise. Hallelujah. If you can hear my voice right now. Pass the veil into the holy place. We are filled with great anticipation. Just to look upon your holy face. We have come here by your invitation. Thank you, Lord.
brazen altar to your open arms again to the king of kings the lord of lords we come running to the brazen altar to your open arms thank you god to the king of kings lord of lords we come running to the brazen Everybody say, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Say, roar, hail, hail. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail. Let the lion roar.
my gosh. Today is a historical day for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I came here for the Domino Revival movie premiere. Pastor Mike, we left out of that building. It was right around the corner from here. And I began to walk these streets back to the hotel. And everywhere I looked, I saw brokenness. Everywhere I looked on the sidewalks, I saw people broken. I smelled the weed in the air. I saw a lady on the, on the road. Literally, her hand was in the road. And on her arm were full of track marks. And we stopped. And I said, can I tell you something? This is not the life that God has for you. There's a better way. His name is Jesus. Oh, his name is Yahweh. And today, I've come to tell you, it doesn't matter what you've gone through. This is not about denomination. Don't worry about what church I go to. I represent one, and his name is Jesus. Can I testify? Can I testify? I love everybody here that's saved, but I feel like God brought me here on a mission to talk to some people who may not know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. You're all the way up there in the bleachers. You're way back there just listening. You're sitting on the sidewalk selling something. And I want to tell you, I used to be that girl that had her arm out in the road with the track marks because I did heroin. I I was a meth addict. I was the one living in people's backyards like an animal on the street. Are you hearing me? Do I have your attention, New York City? And I got so low. I had abortions. Oh, I'm going to tell it the real way. I ain't going to tell it the churchified way. I ain't gonna just say I've been through some stuff. I'm gonna tell you exactly what that stuff was. I was broken. I was suicidal. I had cut my arm till there was barely any skin left. Are you hearing me? That's the life that I lived. I didn't wanna live anymore. I had been on the streets and on meth for nine years in and out of prison, jail. You can imagine what I had to go through. And one day, when I was at my lowest of lows, I cried out one thing. I said, God, help me. And I'll tell you, I didn't see any angels come in and I didn't see any lightning. I didn't really see anything, but I felt a peace. And I'm here to tell you from that day, Jesus Christ, not rehab. Hello, somebody. Not Dr. Phil, not a good self-help book, but Jesus was the one who picked me up. He turned me around. That's why I'm shouting. That's why I'm so loud right now. Because I know that if he did it for me, he can do it for you. The chain breakers in the room. My Bible tells me of people that actually were in a cycle after cycle after cycle. And it looked like they couldn't get out of it. It looked like they weren't going to be set free. I love the story of the woman with the issue of blood. How many of you heard it? This woman had sickness in her body for 12 years over a decade. 
And the whole town said, don't touch her. She's unclean. She spent every single bit of her money, had nothing left. And she said to herself, I'm going to preach to myself on this one. I'm going to preach to my whole self. She said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if, if, I could just, if I could just get to him. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, and she heard of a man named Jesus. She never saw Jesus do the miracle. She wasn't in the service where Jesus was turning water into wine. She just heard somebody went and testified. Oh my gosh. And she said, okay, okay, I'm going to get myself to him. You are here today in probably a similar crowd that was there when she was pressing her way through people. Imagine if a woman was way in the back and decided to push all of you all out of the way because she had to get to Jesus. You wouldn't recognize her. You wouldn't know what was going on. You would just think that some rude person just pushed you. But as soon as she touched Jesus, as soon as she touched him, the Bible says healing virtue came out of Jesus and into the woman. And that's being released right here in New York City right now. If you need healing in your body, lift your hands right now. Test them. Try them. Lift your hands. I believe that healing is going to flow right now to you. I believe, oh, I believe that backs are being healed. Cancer is being healed. The doctors gave you no hope. But Jesus is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, reach up and touch him tonight. Jesus turned around and he said, daughter, not stranger, not failure, not loser. Oh my gosh. He said, daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Some of you right here, you've been so depressed. You felt broken. You've actually said, they tore my heart to pieces. They broke me. But Jesus, he makes you whole. He's the one that puts the pieces back together again. Do you believe it? Shout amen in this place. Blind Martimaeus. Oh my gosh. Pastor Pagani, you notice how every time we say these names, we always call people by their issue they used to have. We call her the woman with the issue of blood, right? We don't call her the healed woman. We don't say Bartimaeus. We say what? Blind Bartimaeus. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what they say about you, no matter what's in your past, no matter what you've walked through, God calls you the beloved. He calls you healed. He calls you set free. He calls you daughter. He calls you son. You're not too far gone. Blind Bartimaeus, he cried out, oh, son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody around him, shh, shh, be quiet. You're doing too much. It don't take all that. Oh my gosh. Some people have looked at you like that. And the Bible says he cried out even more because in this season, you're gonna need to get aggressive about your healing. You're gonna need to get aggressive about your deliverance. You're gonna need to be like the woman and press press in i know you've gone through a tough season i know the circumstances look bad but if you would just get a press in your spirit he cried out even more if god said it if god said it i want i believe it The woman was healed. The 
blind man was healed. Jesus, everywhere he went, he healed. That is not a fictional story from, from some fairy tale. Jesus is healing people. If he took me from a life on the streets, addiction, drugs, I lived an alternative lifestyle, I ain't getting nobody to say amen right there. If he took me off the street and he raised me up, he made me a mom, he made me a wife, he made me a daughter of the king. I don't cut myself anymore. I don't want to commit suicide anymore. I don't drink myself to sleep anymore. We never satisfied that. Drugs never satisfied it. Alcohol didn't satisfy it. Sex didn't satisfy it. Jesus! Somebody call on the name. Say his name. Lift your hands one more time. For that person that's in here and you need a healing, I believe that healing is flowing all through this place right now. For those of you that don't believe in Jesus that are watching, you're going to watch verified miracles happen right now in Jesus' name. Somebody's shoulder just popped. God's aligning your body right now. Somebody came in with extreme neck pain and you can move it. You didn't move it before like this, but God's touching you. Somebody came in with a limp. God's healing that leg right now. The swelling is going down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Arthritis is being healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Migraines have to go in the name of Jesus on this side in the name of Jesus God's touching that thing that they said is in your body is being pulled out by the finger of God right there right there right there I don't have to worry about what tomorrow holds. I don't have to worry. Do you hear me? Because I have a hope. If God said it, my job is to believe it. My job is to believe it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, how many need to experience healing? How many need to receive healing? Come on, lift your hands. He sees you. trade and addiction for contentment in me. Orphans finding family. Here's he
Come on, church. That's a cry of a generation right now. Come on, we saw it move before. In generations past, we've seen powerful moves of God. But right now, I want you to go ahead, raise your hand if you're 18 years or younger right now. Come on, we've got Gen Z hungry for the true and living God. I want to speak to our young people. Because when we're singing that song, we mean it. The things that you read about in the Bible, what you're seeing in the Domino Revival is a whole bunch of people that actually believe that what God used to do, He still does. What we're seeing in our nation is a whole lot of people that wanna, don't want to read about what God used to do. They want to experience the power of what God still does today. And so young people, what you're encountering right now, it has to get into your schools. What you're encountering right now, it has to get into your homes. What if I told you tonight, young person, that you can be the instrument that God uses to see your family saved? And so all of our more seasoned believers, can we champion our young people here tonight and believe that we're going to see God do in this generation what we saw him do in our grandparents' generation in greater measure. Come on, New York City. Who's believing for a double portion in this season? Come on, we're going to see him do it again, church. We're going to see him do it again. Come on. We're not done yet. Come on, who's believing for more? Come on, who's already received freedom? Who's already received healing in their body? Come on, who's renewed the joy of their salvation today? But God's got more. We're going to keep on moving. But I want you, as Pastor Julie was singing and declaring, you said it, I believe it. I believe that many of you are going to receive a word from God. Maybe he's even reminded you of a word that he'd given you. He said it. It's time to believe it and receive it tonight. And so we're going to keep moving on. We're getting ready. Come on, we're moving. We're going to hear from our lead pastor here at V1 Church, Pastor Mike Signorelli, in a little bit. He's got such an on-time word for this era of our world. But first, we have the privilege of hearing from an anointed man of God. He's a prophet to the nations. He's a renowned author. And his name is Prophet Jeremiah Johnson. Come on, New York City. Come on online. You can get loud. Come on, let's welcome him up. Good evening, New York City. Tonight, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the number one enemy of revival. I want to expose to you the stronghold called the religious spirit. The religious spirit has a form of godliness but denies the power of God. The religious spirit is the author of cessationism, a doctrine of demons that says the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for today. The religious spirit comes to domesticate Christians. It comes to tame us. You know that the religious spirit has a stronghold in someone's life. When my Bible says that the righteous are as bold as lions. How many of you are lions? lions and lionesses but the religious spirit doesn't breed lions and lionesses it raises up kitty cats and there are a lot of kitty cats who attend church every Sunday because they're strangled by the spirit of religion how many of you believe that Jesus died for more than an hour on Sunday and five bucks in an offering Jesus Christ died for all of us, all of him for all of us. 
I believe that the religious spirit primarily targets a specific group of people. You could be here tonight, and I want to expose it to you. The religious spirit targets people who were once radical for the devil. How many people here tonight, you were once radical for the devil? How many of us can remember a time when we wouldn't even go out to the club till 2 or 3 a.m., where we didn't care how many drinks we had, how many hits of drugs? We can't even remember who we slept with. Well, the religious spirit comes, and it offers people who once had a radical testimony for the devil, it comes and offers them a lukewarm testimony for Jesus. The religious spirit takes people who were once radical for the devil, and it enslaves them to lukewarm Christianity. And the way that it has gotten into the church is through a false gospel. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, false gospel. There is a false gospel being preached in America. It's called behavior modification. The real gospel of Jesus Christ is about inward transformation. It's about God giving us a new heart, a new mind, a new lifestyle. Come on, somebody shout Jesus. So the religious spirit, it comes through a false gospel and it has people raising their hands on Sunday and pulling their pants down on Friday. You cannot worship God on Sunday and have sex with your boyfriend or girlfriend on Friday night and think you're really following Jesus. Folks, that's a false gospel. That's religious spirit. And it's coming to confront revival. But I've got good news for you. I see a remnant of people in New York City who are sold out to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the salvation. Come on, somebody shout amen. You know, I'm tired of running into people who don't want to be a part of the kingdom of God because they know too many hypocrites. The religious spirit thrives on hypocrisy. The religious spirit has people act one way at church and a different way at home. And we're living in a generation who wants real. They want transparent. They want what you see is what you get. And we're living in family revival. We're living in marriage revival. We're living in a generation who's going to sell out for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have you ever met somebody enslaved by religion? You once were out at the club with them late and they got a hold of this false gospel and you once saw them grinding and wiling out in the club and then all of a sudden at church they're like this. You say, bro, I know you. I know when you once served the devil, you were bumping and grinding in the club, but now you serve God and you look like a statue at church. That's called religious spirit. You need freedom. You need deliverance. You need a religious spirit. You need those chains broken off of you. You need freedom and you need revival. You need revival. You need the raw, the authentic. You need the power of God. You need the transforming power of God. You need the glory. You need to cast out demons. You need to heal the sick. Come on, who wants power? The power of the gospel. No more games. No more games. So in re
revival, we go all in. In revival, we stop playing religious games. In revival, we stop worshiping on Sunday and pulling our pants down on Friday. In revival, what you see is what you get. Now, I've noticed a few more things I want to continue to expose. I'm telling you, I travel all over this country. I believe that the number one stronghold in America is the religious spirit. It is lukewarm Christianity that has deceived millions who think they're going to heaven and they're headed straight for hell because they've accepted a form of godliness but deny the power of the gospel. And we need to wake up. We need to sound the alarm. We need messengers to rise. We need lions and lionesses to rise. The religious spirit not only targets people who once radically served the devil, but folks, in my experience, the religious spirit targets women. I want to tell you that God is raising up Esthers. God is raising up Deborahs. God is raising up female voices in America that are going to make religious devils go crazy. The religious spirit does not like women preachers. Now listen, listen. I grew up a pastor's kid. I preach with male preachers all the time, and I've noticed something. You can have the most dry, stale, male preacher putting everybody to sleep. It's so dry, you could hear a rat pee on a cotton ball. I'm talking frozen, chosen assembly with Pastor Frigidaire. Some of you go to this church. Some of you need freedom. Some of you need deliverance. You did not get delivered from drugs to rot on the back of a pew in a church. You got delivered from drugs so that you can deliver other people off drugs. You didn't get delivered from alcohol so that you could just hang out at church. You got delivered from alcohol so you could cast the demon of alcohol. Break those generational curses in the name of Jesus. These female voices, they start preaching. They start teaching. And these religious devils go crazy. But I know a couple of Deborahs. And I know a couple of Esthers. And I declare over females tonight that the spirit of religion is being broken off of your life in Jesus' name. I want to do something. I want to repent to you. As a church leader, I want to repent to you if you're a female here where you have come under the influence of a religious spirit that has told you to be quiet. Under the influence of a religious spirit that's told you, let the men preach. I repent right now in Jesus' name, and I say that I'm sorry. But I declare to you tonight that revival is hitting New York City. Revival is hitting the United States of America. And I say, sing, Deborah, sing. I say, rise, Esther, rise. I say, take your post. Lift up your voice. This is your hour. It's the hour of the female voices in America. I'm telling you from the White House to the church house, we're going to see women voices rise in America. Come on, I, some of you are manifesting. Some of you are tweaking out. Some of you are literally getting delivered from the spirit of religion because the anointing of the chain breaker is in the room tonight. It's in New York City. We're getting free from religion, powerless Christianity. We're getting free of Christianity that bans female voices. 
And the last thing that I'll tell you is this. The religious spirit hates radical praise and worship. Oh, my. The religious spirit hates radical praise and worship. Just as long as you three, sing three songs and have a nice little message, just as long as you just stand there, religion loves it. But the moment the flags come out, the moment the shofars come out, the moment somebody finds a little rhythm, the moment somebody finds a little dance, see, they can make fun of your dance, but they don't know your deliverance. I said they can make fun of your dance, but they don't know your deliverance. And God is raising up a radical Davidic generation of praise and worship. Come on, somebody lift up just to make religion mad. Jesus! Come on, did he save you? Did he heal you? Did he deliver you? Did he set your feet upon the rock? Oh, oh, Jesus. I'm telling you, we got people like this tonight. And they once were crack addicts. They once were alcoholics, and they're just as depressed as they once were. And the chain breaker is coming tonight to break the chains of religion off of a generation. Come on, he picked me up. He spun me around. Come on. I'll leave you with this. In 1986... There was a man named David Wilkerson who walked the streets of this city. And he saw the prostitutes. He saw the pimps. He saw the brokenness that was in New York City. And he began to be overcome by the burden. He cried out to the Lord and he said, God, do something in New York City. And God spoke to him and said, David... You know this city. David, you live here. You do something about it. And anyone who's under the sound of my voice, who's in New York City, I prophesy to you that God is redigging the wells of David Wilkerson again. You live in this city. You know this city. Now go and do it. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause. Jesus! 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 Jesus!
and not too far from there they erected a statue to the beast but God sent us here today to confront the ruling principality called Baal and to tell you you will not have New York City and God sent us here to tell every witch and every warlock and every priestess and every coven that we cancel every blood ritual we cancel every contract we cancel every sacrifice made for New York City we cancel it out by the blood of Jesus and we tell you New York City belongs to Jesus I said the five boroughs belong to Jesus I said Long Island belongs to Jesus I said I'll stay New York belongs to Jesus if you believe that shit we ain't playing today Prophet Jeremiah said something that was so key. He said that David Wilkerson prophesied of days like today that there would be a no-nonsense generation. I'm here to tell you that that no-nonsense generation, we are here! We are here! We're here! We're here! I want you to hop up everybody around you and tell them we are here. We're here. Hop up. Hop up. Hop up. Tell them. Tell them we are here. We are here. Hop up. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. We are here. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do I got some radical Christians? Come on, come on, let me hear you. New York City won't belong to the devil. New York City belongs to Jesus. New York City belongs to the cross. Yeah! Yes! Yes! Woo! Hallelujah! God sent me here. By the authority of the courtroom of heaven and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to tell every coven every witch and warlock you are unauthorized and this city belongs to Jesus the Christ and there is a Gideon army. There is a faithful 300. The 22,000, they were scared. But I want you to tell your neighbor, we ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. We are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. So God called Gideon. We ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. We ain't never. Come on, everybody. To all, cri to all Christians. We ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. Do me a favor. Wave that flag right there. Yes! Now shout! Yeah. 
in a few moments, we're going to do a mass renouncing. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because Gideon's army could not be successful until they first take down Gideon's father's altar to Baal. And there's way too many altars all over this city. So before revival would come, we got to kick the devil out. The second thing, the Lord sent me to this city, to this event today, is to bring a prophetic apostolic declaration of a name change over this city. Sometimes the sin is too deep. Sometimes the curses are too entrenched that sometimes God doesn't just save someone, but he has to radically even change their name. So sometimes he would take a Abram and make him an Abraham. He would take a Cephas and make him to Peter. He would take a Saul and make him to Paul. He would take a Jacob and to Israel. Now why, why is this important? Because this city is known by two primary phrases. The Big Apple. And the Big Apple represents that this is the biggest place to be. But also the apple is a representation of temptation. It's a representation of human beings eating forbidden fruit and touching that which is unclean. So God says, touch not the unclean. So he's gonna clean this city today Watch this, watch this. The second thing, this city is known as the city that never sleeps. That means that this is the city that never dreams. This is known as the city where dreams die. Why? Because in order for you to dream, you have to go to sleep. So if the city that is demonized by spiritual insomnia that God can never speak to you because the city is always awake did you catch what I just said but God said I'm gonna change the name of this city from the city that never sleeps from the Big Apple to the city of peace to the city of the five bones the city of the five phone. The city of the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island. The city of five smooth stones. That God is going to take the boroughs of this city and put it in his slingshot and take the head of Goliath and cut it off. Hands raised. The Lord Jesus Christ has not forgotten New York City. The Lord has a sling in his hand. And all he is looking for is five smooth stones. He is looking for the Bronx. One stone. He is looking for Brooklyn. Two stones. You missed it. He is looking for Queens. Three. He's looking for Manhattan. He's looking for Staten Island. But technically... He only needs one. And God said, I'm going to take this divided splinter city and I'm going to unify it and I'm going to put it in my hand and I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. And Bayah will come down. And the beast will come down. Has raised. You're going to repeat after me. Say it with me. Not today, Satan. Not today. Not today. Maybe yesterday. Maybe in years gone by. But not today. Why? 
because there is a blood bought church that's here right now. And we say enough is enough. Repeat after me with your heads raised. Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive the sins of this city in making an altar to false gods. We come against the spirit of Baal. We command you in the name of Jesus, loose yourself. Get off of New York City. Every demon, spirit of witchcraft, spirit of new age, we command you in the name of Jesus. We are, we command you, loose your hold. We order you, go back to hell where you came from. In Jesus' name. Now shout out to God right now.
Every hand lifted from the front all the way to the back. We cry holy. Come on, sing it. Holy. Worship with your spirit. This is not emotionalism. This is not fanaticism. Those that worship will worship with spirit and in truth. Come on, lift up your voice as loud as you can. Sing holy. Cry holy. We cry holy. Return to the city. The ark has returned to the city. I said if the presence of God goes before us, none of our enemies can stand against us. Greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. Is there somebody that believes that the presence of God is here? Then no demon can stand against what he has ordained in this time. This cry holy, oh, it's not because we are good, it's because he is good. The lamb that was slain, his blood, it runs through the streets of New York City tonight, declaring holy, prostitutes, receiving redemption. Crying holy drug addicts, receiving forgiveness, crying holy, holy is the lamb, worthy is the one that was slain. They cry holy. Hey, come on, holy. We cry holy. Cry out, cry out. Yeah, there it is. There's got to be a desperation. There's got to be an agony. There has to be a longing. There's a hunger. There's a hunger. The glory of the Lord is settling upon Times Square. 
The king is walking through the streets of Times Square right now. And we cry, holy, let those with eyes see that he is here. Let those with ears hear that he is here. And we cry, holy, the ones that see, cry, holy, the ones that hear, cry, holy, the ones who have prayed for this moment, the ones who have fasted, the ones who are longing, the ones who have pushed aside the programs, the ones who have resisted religion, we cry, holy, holy, holy. Fire fall, fire fall, fire fall. New York City, you've experienced the baptism of John and water, but I come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire! Fire fall, fire fall, fire fall, fire fall! Fire fall. Fire fall! There it is. There comes a moment when you have to provoke heaven. There comes a moment where you have to say, God, turn your eyes to this nation. God is not done with America. We are at a turning point. We are at a turning point. We've reached a tipping point. Over my shoulder is a ball that drops. And once a year when that ball drops, it declares a new year. But I say in the spiritual realm, there is a ball dropping over my shoulder right now that is declaring a new, that is declaring a new day. I call to the end of the seeker-sensitive movement. It is over. We will carry the ark. We will be a person of the presence of Jesus Christ. There's a turning point in this nation. Division is over. It's a new year. Denominationalism is dead. Let the true worshipers arise from the north to the south, to the east, to the west. There's one body, there's one baptism, there's one Jesus, there's one Holy Ghost. Let the church arise. Over my shoulder in the spiritual realm is a ball dropping that's declaring the end of guilt and shame and condemnation. You used to have to have a seminary degree 
And now God is simply looking for a yes. We don't have time. There's an urgency in 2 Peter. When we talk about the return of Christ, I'm not talking about canceling all your plans. I'm talking about the urgency that produces anguish, that on the inside of you, you're disturbed. You're at your job and something is turning in your belly because you look at the faces of your coworkers and you know they're bound for hell because whatever your vocation is, I can assure you, it does not exist in heaven. In heaven, there are sons and daughters and there's got to be a desperation inside of you that's in, that says when we sing the song, spirit break out, we mean break all the way out. Break out of our churches. The biggest church in New York City is too small when there's 20,000 people in your church, but 10 million people in these streets. Spirit, break out. Spirit, break. Revival is not a church service. It's you baptizing people in your bathtub because you can't wait for Sunday. It's you doing a deliverance in the back room at work on your lunch break because those demons are so irritated and agitated that they gotta come up and out. Revival is inconvenience. Revival will cost you everything. David said, I will not offer God that which costs me nothing. And at most local churches, you get your favorite beverage in one hand and a bagel in the other. And it costs you $3 in gas to get there. 70 minutes service and you're out. But I see a turning. I see a turning. Right now in the streets of New York City, they can decriminalize marijuana. And people thought they were getting high, but it brought them down low. Because there's a high cost for low living. Counterfeit comforts in these streets, trying to medicate See, what happens is no matter how high inflation goes in this nation, millennials got college degrees and they cannot afford houses, but they can, they can always afford alcohol. The devil is a liar. It's gonna cost you everything to see revival. And David said, I will not offer God that which costs me nothing. Oh, if you're a pastor, I dare you to ask your church for more than tithes and offering. Ask them for 24-7 intercession. Ask them for evangelism in the streets. Ask them to get down and dirty. If they need a seminary degree, fire up your printer and start printing degrees because God takes the unqualified and qualifies them by the blood of Jesus because he uses the foolish people to confound the wise because he takes the have-nots and raises them up and gives them a voice somebody shout if you say yes new york shout if you say yes politicians can't solve it can I submit to you that that's good news in disguise? Because the end of their strategy is the beginning of the supernatural. Uh, uh, when you hear the sound of an, of an impending famine, know that God is getting ready to debut a Joseph who had been going through a process 
and God said, I'm about to debut him. When you hear the taunts of Goliath, can I just tell you, our educational system cannot solve it. Indoctrinating our children. Can I just tell you, every demon under the sound of my voice right now, you cannot have our children. You may run in our family, but we are where you run. Are there any generational bloodline curse breakers in Times Square right now? Come on, Jenny. Come on, Julie. I need some help because we're about to do a mass deliverance right here in Times Square. Are there any chain breakers? Listen, here's what we're about to do. We talked about the spirit of religion. Let's evict the spirit of religion. We talked about the spirit of addiction. Let's evict the spirit of addiction. Now listen, some of you go to churches that act like demons don't exist. Let me just tell you, New York City said we have a rat problem, so they got a rat czar. No, no, New York City has a demon problem, so can I just introduce myself as the demon czar tonight? We're about to slay the enemy tonight. There's some chronic illness under the sound of my voice that's about to be healed right now. There's some cancer cells that are going to begin to die right now. Oh, no, this isn't the Jeremiah Johnson show. This isn't the Jenny Weaver show. This isn't the Greg Locke show. But if Christ be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus and let every other demon lay low in the presence of Jehovah. Yeshua HaMashiach, my Savior, Messiah. Is there anybody here that belongs to the tribe of Judah? Is there anybody who got grafted in? Is there anybody? Come on. Let's roar like our father over the... Come on. So here's what we're about to do. All over this place, we're about to receive deliverance. Some of you are here for an impartation of fire. Some of you are here to return back to your first love. Listen, if you play it safe in warfare, you die. Do you hear what I just said? If you play it safe in warfare, you die. See, there are peacetime generals and there are wartime generals. See, the peacetime generals... They have nice outfits with creases and smell like cologne, but they're paper pushers in an office. But wartime generals, they might not look, look cute. They might not have it all together, but wartime generals have their spiritual sword dipped in blood and they know how to go out to war. This is a call to arms in the spiritual realm. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We take captive every thought that erects itself up against the word of God and we pull it down. Somebody shout. Come on, Jenny, help me chain break her. The devil cannot leave for my family. This is an official notice to the enemy. The chain break is in the room. And there's no telling what he's going to do. I said, I said, I said, the devil. Oh, I don't hear y'all. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I said the devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Say, chain breakers in the room. And there's no telling what he's going to do. I said, I said, I said, devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice. You want to say, say. Tell it, tell you what he's gonna do. I said, 
Okay, I got a message for somebody. And I want you to hear me loud and clear right now. They didn't start you, so they can't stop you. I feel so much confusion coming against you right now. But I want to remind you that he who began a good work in you will see it through till completion. Let me just tell you, we're about to leave this place in a few moments. But I feel a commissioning happening because for far too long, many of us... Oh, come on. For far too long... Yeah, yeah, the devil's real upset about what's going to happen. We have been maintaining, but we were not destined to maintain. We were destined to take territory. Listen, for far too long, we have killed our destiny in the comment section of social media. Let me just tell you, a moving train does not stop for barking dog. So, Julie, I need your help with this real quick. I need your help because here's what we're about to do. We're going back to our homes, and we are going to go back to the enemy's camp and take back what was stolen from us. Lift your hands if you're ready to be commissioned. Lift your hands if you're ready to say yes. Lift your hands if you're ready to go take territory. We are not, I said we are not maintaining anymore. We are not maintaining. We are taking territory. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it. your hands right now as we prepare to end tonight many of you are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says after the Holy Spirit comes upon you you will receive power to be my witnesses on the count of three all over Times Square I want you to begin to speak in tongues as you receive the gift of tongues you are going to receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit 
You're going to receive gifts of the Spirit, prophecy, healing, discerning of spirits. There's going to be a supernatural impartation to do the will of the Lord. One, two, three, now. Come on. Holy Spirit, baptize them now. Speak it out boldly. Speak it out boldly, unapologetically. We are not ashamed of the gift giver. We are not ashamed of the gift giver. Hey, Pentecost, Pentecost is come. Hey, speak it out. Speak it out. We are not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. It's a new day. It's a new day. Hey, come on. Yeah, yeah. As you hear the sound of that shofar, I want to commission you. Let's take this Holy Spirit baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit into the streets of New York City. I dare you. In the book of Acts, it said they added to their numbers daily. I dare you to go into the neighborhoods and the blocks of New York City right now and to leave with this fresh fire. And let's go into the boroughs on our way home and leave with this fresh fire. How many of you are believing that you're family will be saved before 2024. I said before 2024. As we disperse from this place, let me just tell you, your feet are girded with the shoes to speed the gospel. Come on, is there anybody swinging the sword of the spirit? Is there anybody with a shield of faith? Is there anybody who's ready to go out there and do the will of the Father? Is there anybody who says, I don't need another worship service. I don't need another sermon. I just need another person to set free and break chains from. I just need somebody who will listen. Are you ready? Come on. Heavenly Father, I pray right now over each and every one of them, that as we disperse from this place, as we go out, Lord, that there is no Target, Walmart, there is no bodega that's safe because where we are, the spirit of the living God is with us. Father, as we go back to our schools, I thank you that revival is about to break out in schools. I thank you, Father, that Jesus clubs are going to be formed in schools. Father, I think, oh, come on, son. Somebody. Lord, I thank you that you're bringing a fresh wind and fire to churches and a rising tide lifts all ships. And Father, I thank you that from every generation, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest, that you're pouring out your spirit on all flesh, Father. And we thank you for November 13th. 
when we go back to theaters across America and that every single movie theater turns into a tabernacle in the wilderness and suicides will be canceled and depression anxiety will be broken and addictions will be broken and father i thank you that the latter is greater than the former and we thank you god for stepping into the glory days somebody shout come on let's go do what jesus told us to do love you guys